Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. It's good to have you along for the ride today and every day. Oh, ah! It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's the Daily Woo. Straight ahead, Austin, Texas. The early 90s really impacted me in a way because that is when I discovered punk rock. And that's still, that whole idea, that mentality, still transcends into what I'm doing today. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Not only the music, but there was also a handful of movies that I felt define that era of my life. Two of them sharing the same name, Suburbia. There is the 1983 film that will stand the test of time as a classic. But there was also one that came out in 1996 that holds a huge special place in my heart. And it was filmed right here, the backside of this convenience store. Let me rephrase that. Not just the backside, but the entire property. In fact, three quarters of the movie was filmed at this location. It's now an insurance company, but back then there was a group of teenagers hanging out on the very corner of this structure. This is bringing back some serious memories. Watching that movie with my friends repeatedly. This is the shot where the group is walking across, right across here. It looks the same except for all the writing on the windows. When they were shooting the scenes, they built on an extension right here. But most of the time they were hanging out against this wall. There was a payphone right in here. Pretty incredible. Still remains all these years later. Right on this exact spot is where Giovanni Ribisi's character went on a rant stating the fact that in 50 years the people who were doing the same thing that they were doing, complaining about the price of Oreos and drinking beers on the corner of a convenience store, would not even know who they were. And if you've ever seen the movie, seriously, so much of it was just right here against this wall. Right here. As well as back here. In fact, that used to be the laundry mat where a couple scenes were filmed in front of. In recent years, they have put cinder blocks over the glass and it's no longer a laundry facility. But if you look at this here, these bricks are still the same and they changed this a little bit. It used to be a ramp coming down. Two of the main characters were sitting right there in that exact spot before they walked off into the woods past where Large Marge is there was a van back over there. They went back there to make out. One of their old schoolboy friends became a rich rock star and returned back and was sitting right here playing the acoustic guitar. And this was a pivotal scene, another rant right in here. Oh my gosh, look at this. I did not, I did not put this here. There is a Bud Light can, almost an homage to those days. Try writing another song about Sandra Bernhardt's salad, a-hole. I'm pretty certain if I would have seen the movie now for the first time, it would not have had the impact that it did back then. Life is funny that way. When you see something or hear something, the way you relate to it, a lot of it is based on the perception or what you're going through at that particular moment. It was almost like when I watched the film, I was hanging out with my friends. The characters that were in the movie were just like me and the friends that I had at that moment, at that time period, if that makes any sense. A bunch of rebellious kids thinking that they would never go anywhere in life, embracing the slacker mentality. I think a good portion of us have been at that point in our lives. Some of us still might be. I am thankful enough to have pushed past that, looking back on that era, it's crazy to think about. I never realized that you could kind of break free of that mentality and push forward. Because truth be told, nothing is going to be accomplished hanging out on the side of a store, getting drunk on a nightly basis, complaining about life. However, reverting back to what I was saying, something positive can be taken out of these type of situations. It is a very good thing to develop 
the attitude of not giving a crud what other people think of you, what society thinks of you, what their brain is pushing in your direction and what they're going to formulate an opinion or what their ideas that you should do. That is the positive aspect I get out of that movie, the punk rock ideals that I grew up with and I still embrace to this day. And in some weird way, just staring at this facade from a lesser known mid 90s film kind of jarred my brain a little bit and reminded me of that. The good and the bad that can be taken from any situation. At one point they were standing up on top of that roof next to that air conditioner launching their empty bottles towards that church. I don't think they threw it that far. I think it landed kind of in the road. And the fact that the field has not been developed where the van was sitting, that's pretty cool. I just noticed something that is pretty awesome behind this newer chain link barbed wire fence is the old fence that you can see in the movie. Right here, this green fence with the white X's going all the way down that is all fallen over and decayed. You can see that a number of times when the characters walk from the store, cross over it, and head to the van. Some parts of this state are flat, other parts, not so much. There's downtown off on the horizon. We're going around it though. We're not going downtown, we're going around downtown. And in keeping with the theme of Richard Linkletter movies, I'm gonna grab a bite to eat at Top Notch Burger from Days and Confused. All right, all right, all right. Looks like they even have some props. I don't know if they're screen used or maybe a recreation, but they have some props from the movie itself. Now that's what I call flame broiled. What are you, Adam? Good. Just a random dinosaur hanging out here as well. I would have liked to have the full experience and parked underneath the awning like they did in the movie. The large Marge, she doesn't fit under there. Kind of glad I escaped there without a paddle. I cannot escape Austin without paying a toll. All the cash lanes are closed by mail once again. How the heck am I supposed to pay that? Very confusing. The rest areas here not only have restroom facilities, but also storm shelters in case of tornadoes. a little town called Salado. A very beautiful, serene creek with a small waterfall. Going underneath both bridges that lead through the town. As I was standing here, I just realized I'd been here before. And the reason I know that is I noticed this little rock structure here. There used to be a mermaid over in there and I did a vlog here I looked it up I use my own Colombo like research skills I was here on the Daily Woo day 133 very long time ago and I did an unedited vlog of the mermaid that used to be right over there it's not there anymore and I think it was located right over here next to where this bubbling bubbling brook out of the ground was somewhere in there why 
Why did they get rid of the mermaid? Okay, I'm not going crazy. They moved it up here onto drier land. That's it. Right there. I knew I wasn't going crazy. I knew I'd been here before. Up at the top of the hill is a park right next to the former Salado College, which burned down in 1924. The statue is in honor of Elijah Robertson, who not only founded the community, but also the school. Gotta love old relics like this. That's history right there. But don't climb on it, because it will destroy it. And alcohol is forbidden! Ugh, hurts, my th hurts my throat when I do that. That's what it looked like in its heyday. There's still a pretty good portion of it left, though. You just have to use your imagination to remember what it was. Oh, there's a tree growing through the middle. That tree definitely was not there in 1870. The trees were outside the building, not inside it. And they have the old gate there, too. 1859. That's cool. Spaceship Earth? Is that you? In the very recent past, actually within the last couple of weeks, you might remember my friend Jacob the Carpetbagger visited Texas and we did seven days of eating barbecue and on day one of that adventure of us going out and testing out what the state's BBQ has to offer we stayed at the filming location of the gas station for the 1974 horror film classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre in fact I bought a t-shirt from there we stayed in a cabin out back and we had the most amazing barbecue. In fact, we mentioned throughout the whole week how all the other briskets, the beef briskets, did not compare to their barbecue. And that is because the gentleman who made it was the former owner of the gas station. His name was Calvin Bilbo, and he ended up selling it to the new owners who were doing a new entrepreneurial business where people can stay on the property. We ended up hanging out with Calvin for a while, eating the barbecue, and I just found out that he has passed away. And it's very sad to even think about, especially being just in the very, in the last week, 10 days ago, 12 days ago, we were there hanging out with him. Jacob and I were the only ones on property, listening to some of his stories about the cast who has visited there. Happy-go-lucky guy, seemed very healthy. I don't know the reason on why he passed, what the complications were or the reasons were, but I thought you should know. It really kind of hit me hard, like how quickly everything can be gone. So I just wanted to send my thoughts out to his family and his friends. I didn't know him, I was not friends with him, but the brief time that I spent on the property there hanging out with him and talking to him and eating what I consider to be Texas's best beef brisket barbecue that he made. He put a lot of time and effort into his barbecue. Rest in peace, man. Vlog? Over.